Martin. Let's address the elephant in the room. Ruptures. It will happen to you and it's painful. Right in. Lucas, do you remember your first rupture? Yes, I think so. I think it's uh, like the first uh, entire FACO, you do not forget it. Uh, quite a bad feeling. Good thing about the ruptures in the beginning is that you do not need to handle them yourself because uh, you have somebody <laughs> to take over. But um, it's, a, it's definitely a bad feeling and um, you probably will need to go through this. You don't have to manage your rupt the ruptures yourself and if you are instructing, you will <laughs> you will manage more ruptures um, than it's useful for you. But psychologically, managing the rupture of another another person doesn't put that much pressure on you. So it's it's a very good thing. And you can only go in to save the day. And usually you do save the day. So if you see a rupture, what would you recommend? Um, the first thing that you need to do is uh, just to analyze the situation. So you need to, to, to try to, to get what's, what's happening and do not rush to, to go out with your instruments or just, uh, just be patient, you know, calm down, calm down and um, analyze the situation, see what's the problem. Just take a deep, deep, deep breath and, um, and look into the microscope and yeah, maybe hold on even for a couple of seconds. I think that's the first thing to do. Very important. The Don't get out of the eye with the instruments. Just stay in. Yes, yeah, stay in and uh, and chill. Yeah, and um, then the first thing I usually do is that uh, you need to grab the, the the OVD and to to put it into the eye while you're still holding the the instrument. Usually, it's the FACO tip because uh, this is probably the most frequent um, situation when that happens. And then you uh, you you put some visco inside. Um, push back the vitreous and um, then you get out. And maybe right. lower lower the pressure just a little bit, put an OVD and then relax. Yeah. What, what I like to do as a trick is if you have a complication and you should train that, the first thing that you do once you notice a complication, you say something positive. So I, I usually say very well and um, this kind of, you know, psychologically calms me down and calms the rest of the team down yeah, as well. Yeah, also the patient, I mean... Um... Yeah, it happens and it, it's not good. And you need to train those things. I think for complication management, wet labs are very, very good. Um, we have in Austria, there, there is um, one wet lab um, from, from the MTS guys and, and the Oertli company. Um, and once you've trained a situation of a capsular rupture that you say, okay... Now, I'm, I'm in a situation of a capsular rupture. What do I do? Take a deep breath, stay inside the eye, put in OVD, lower the IOP, analyze the situation. Um, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the first and most important thing. Putting in OVD, to be honest, um, doesn't really, in many cases, it doesn't really save you from prolapsing the vitreous. No, no. But there is some cases where you really can preserve the... Um, the diaphragm of the vitreous and then um, don't have vitreous prolapse in the anterior chamber. Those are the lucky ruptures, but um, yeah. it will not be the lucky ruptures that you have in the beginning. By the way, leave a comment if, uh, if you remember your first rupture. Now, a nucleus remover there. Look at the FACO tip and boom, there it happened. You can see it very well in the video and we're going to play it back um, and, and pause it a little bit. Now, um, you see it there, right? Um, the FACO tip, you don't have a perfect occlusion. You have aspiration and then you can see that the capsular, posterior capsular is moving forward because you're aspirating it. And then this happens. Now look at the other situation that we have here. I'm going to pause it just a little bit. Um, this is um, um, OVD removal after having implanted the lens. By the way, most of the capsular um, ruptures happen in the last third of the surgery. But if you look at the situation now, it's not perfect because you have a slight iris prolapse into the tunnel, meaning that you don't have a very stable anterior chamber. And we are just removing um, OVD. You can't really see it happening, but you see that um, the, the aspiration is on the edge of the IOL. And what happens is because you have a posterior um, um, instability of the anterior chamber, the posterior part of the capsular moves forward and then you aspirate it and then you have uh, one slight movement, uh, movement and then you, you rupture the capsule. So this is, this is probably one of the most disappointing cases. And what you see there is that um, 
you have an rupture of the posterior capsula and the quadrant just boom vanishes away drops like that yeah. i mean <laughs> you have to kind of enjoy this the beauty of this complication because it's very impressive it just goes up boom and then it's gone um I think this is an, another problem that can happen if you if you're working with the quadrants, um, finding the sweet spot um, between occlusion and phaco energy and um, holdability. That's very hard. Do you have any tips? Sometimes you have this situation, right? You don't know. You just have a rupture, and uh, it's so fast you don't even know where it's coming from. And uh, I think that's a that's sometimes a problem. Yes, very important. There is ruptures that you notice. Um, and they are just there, and you don't know what happens. And um, these are probably very painful ruptures. Yeah, painful, and you do not learn nothing yeah. about it because you do not know what to change. Um, it's very frustrating, actually. Those things will happen. Just stay calm, take a deep breath. Yeah, and um, try to manage it as good as you can. Huh? Put in OVD, and it, um, and it happens. Now, there is studies that are saying that you will have your first ruptures after maybe 50 to 100 phacos. Sometimes it happens earlier, sometimes it happens later, but it will happen to everyone. And then it's another peak after 500 phacos and I think another peak after 1,500 phacos, where there's just a time when, when, when this happens. It just doesn't mean if that happens, it doesn't mean that you are a bad surgeon. It just <coughs> means that you are a regular surgeon, a regular human. Yeah, but especially this uh, peak after 500 i think uh, it really it is uh, psychological because uh, this is the moment when you think you you can do it that good and you 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 become invincible and then it happens and then it didn't happen for for hundreds of fakers and then it happens and then uh, it 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 really really hurts again and um yeah, unfortunately, I can uh, really say it was exactly like this with my uh, it, around case 500. It uh, was again a bit um, worrying. Right, I remember that. <laughs> it is like that. But I mean, surgery keeps you humble all the time because you think yeah. you, are, you are the man and then you have a complication and you think you are the worst surgeon in the world. Yeah.